So uh, we're here at the First Star event. I'm Prabhat Gotham. I'm here with Peter Samuelson. You started First Star many years ago. So when did you start First Star and what was the impetus to make you want to start it? It was 1999. Somebody gave me a copy of the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. And I had a good look at that. Nothing not to like. You know, kids should have uh, uh, a name and they shouldn't have to be slaves and they should get an education and a bit of health care and shouldn't have to join the army until they turn 18. 183 nations have signed that, two have not. Who would those two be? Somalia, their excuse is they have no central government, and the United States of America. So that began a great curiosity about, given that every American I've ever met loves children, how could we rank so poorly against the rest of the world in doing what is right by children, especially those who are abused or neglected? I know you started as a film producer, television producer, but then you've got into all this philanthropic work. Have you found this to be more rewarding? And do you want to return and spend more time with film and television, or has this just been taken over your life as your everything? Well, it's certainly the most rewarding thing that I do because we see direct, concrete, measurable results. We see states that change their legislation. You know, there are hundreds of thousands of grown-ups doing a wonderful job working one-on-one -on -one with kids, court-appointed special advocates, big brothers, big sisters, lawyers who volunteer, all sorts of people like that. It's terrific, and we need even more of that. But what there wasn't enough of, and what First Star does, is top-down systemic reform. It's as though we've got lots of people helping kids swim the river. We're not doing that. We're trying to build some bridges so less kids have to swim. Yeah. Change the system. Wonderful. I know you've always had such an emphasis on children's rights issues. How did that begin, or it's children's rights specifically? When people will say, well, there's so many causes, why is it so important to focus on children's rights issues? I think because it's so grossly unfair. And if you ask yourself, well, why do we rank so poorly against the rest of the world? It's partly that children have no voice, uh, they don't hire lobbyists, they can't really march. They can't do a sit-in. Uh, so uh, the other great, important civil rights movements, it was grown-ups of one kind or another who were self-determinant. But kids who are abused or neglected, what are they supposed to do? Somebody needed to stand up and uh, advocate on their behalf. That's what First Star does. Yeah, First Star is such a wonderful organization. I've, since I've learned about it, I've been so excited about everything you do. But I know you use a lot of celebrity voices. That's important to you guys. Why is it important to use celebrity voices, and is that something that you think there should be more celebrities advocating for more charities and causes around the world? We can uh, use all the celebrities we can get. We just need them to have uh, led a blame-free life and to care about kids, and the more visible they are, the better. Uh, I think, you know, in this country we have no royal family, so we've invented one, which is our sports athletic and uh, entertainment industry celebrities. Uh, they are who get the press, they get the ink, they get on the 11 o'clock news. Where it gets really exciting is when you have somebody like Ludacris, who's being honored here today, uh, or Dakota Fanning, who's our youth ambassador, who really understand and work actively to understand the issues. So it's not just a celebrity talking, it's someone who has really delved into it and understood uh, what the real issues are. Lastly, I just want to ask you about how can everyday people, just you know, everyday people that aren't famous, that don't have a huge bank account, but how can everyday people make a difference and help an organization like First Star? Well, www.firststar.org, just the way it sounds. Uh, we have many opportunities for volunteering in different parts of the country, uh, including especially Washington, D.C. and Los Angeles. Uh, that, those are our two hubs, although we do operate very much nationally. And obviously, uh, it's a rough year for donations. Uh, any amount of money is very uh, uh, much needed. Uh, we're way down uh, in exactly the year where the need for First Star is way up. So this uh, gap in the middle uh, is a huge issue for us. And if everybody would just do what they can do, it's very touching, even in a recession, how small donations uh, really don't go down. Big donations go down, small donations continue. Because maybe we all are a little closer to understanding how bad things can get. And you know, 
Poverty drives stress in a family. Stress drives abuse and neglect sometimes of children. And therefore, the programmatic side of First Star is hugely important in this year beyond all others. What would your hope be for First Star in the next 10 years, if you could envision your dream First Star? I'd like us to put ourselves out of business because we raise all of the states to a legislative excellence, like the few who are doing a really good job. It's one of the crazy things that we don't need to invent best practice. It already exists somewhere in this great country. All we have to do is Xerox it and do it everywhere else. Well, thank you, Peter. I know you're involved with a million different causes and charities, but it always goes back to making a difference in children's lives and making real change happen. So thank you for everything that you do and continue you. your work, and I know you will continue your work. Thanks so much.